Well, we're looking again at modulus argument form. We started looking at this last time. It's basically where you find the length and the angle of a complex number rather than like basic two dimensional coordinates that we've seen before. The gentleman on the screen is called De Marvera, or De Moivre, depending on your pronunciation, um, and is a very famous mathematician um, in terms of uh, looking at complex numbers, certainly. And we have a De Marvera's theorem, for instance. So um, we'll have a look at that in due course. Um, starter for us. Look, last time we were looking at finding arguments and modulus of variety of complex numbers. And that's what I want you to do here. It says find the argument in, um, and notice this, it wants you to do it in the 0 to 2 pi um, uh, notation. So not minuses, 0 to 2 pi. Um, but it wants you to find the argument for these three, and you sh you might recall that it's not quite as easy as finding the inverse tab. Uh, and then finding the modulus of z, that's the notation for modulus of z, you should recall. Now that is quite easy, I'll be honest. That's just a bit of Pythagoras, and you ignore the minuses. Square and square root, and do do your stuff with Pythagoras. So pause the video, and, um, and then see what you can come up with. Okay, so I'll, be, I'll do the uh, three arguments for you. Hopefully you've done them by now. So um, I'll, this is number one. Um, so it says z equals 1 plus root 3i. So if I just draw that, it is 1 across root 3i. And I want the angle there. And the great thing about it, anything in this quadrant is equal to what it's meant to be. It's equal to the fact theta. So I can write theta is the inverse tan of root 3 over 1 and you should recall that's 60 degrees but when you do it in mem uh, in uh, radians you get hopefully a different answer which will be root uh, sorry pi by um, 3 um, so my calculator says a third of pi and I've done it now what that means is and this is important that you suss the difference this means that the argument of z is a third of pi Whenever I'm in that quadrant, it will give me the right answer. Now, um, that was A. This is B now. Now, they're not all going to be like that. So when I do 1 minus I, I go 1 across, but 1 down. It's there. So, again, I'm trying to show you that we find every time theta, and that's the inverse tan of, it goes 1 across 1. So it's 1 divided by 1 which is obviously 1, and when I do that on my calculator, I get a quarter pi. Now, that is not the answer. Arg z, because I'm going this way round, I have to remember that really I've got a big old number to add on, and the easiest way to do that is to think, well, it's actually all the way round, 2 pi round, 360 degrees round, minus the angle I just got. And the angle I just got was uh, a quarter pi. So I reckon that's 7 pi by 4. Um, and again, that's not so obvious. Let's try C. What does C say for question 1? It's minus 5 plus 4i. Where is that in the quadrants? Um, that is minus 5 plus 4i. Actually, that is all right. We don't mind that quite well. It's not perfect, but it's, it's easier than some. So that is the angle I will find. That's theta. And what was it? It was minus 5 and uh, 4 up. So that's 4 and that's 5. And I'm going to do the inverse tan. And this, of course, is theta. The inverse tan of 5 over... No, 4 fifths, and they got it wrong. It was the opposite over the adjacent. And when I do that, I haven't got a clue what that is. Not a nice answer. The inverse tan, remember you were in radians, of 4 divided by 5. And I get 0.675. Now that is gain is not the answer because my argument is this angle round to there. So the argument of z has got to be, now remember that's 180 degrees is pi, so I'm going to do pi minus 0 0.675. So pi minus the answer is I get 2.4647. I don't know if they're right, I've not done them prior to doing this so I'm hoping they're right I'm hoping also you get the modulus ones really easily so we'll see what the answers are 2.47 at least I've got the uh, angles right the arguments are right and I'm hoping you've managed to get the um, modulus is right as well 
So all six of those are important. So make sure you've got all six right. Anyway, back to modulus and argument. Um, we've already seen how the modulus of a complex number then and the argument of the complex number are important. And an alternative way then of writing this came about when they started realizing there were uses, more useful ways of solving problems was to think of it in this what we're going to call the modulus argument form. Sometimes, by the way, you might see this referred to as polar form instead. Um, and it comes about, I suppose, from a bit of uh, simple ideas that if, if, if I have R there and I have theta, then using Sokotoa again, I could say, well, just Sokotoa would say that cos of the angle is the adjacent x over the hypotenuse. And if I rearrange that equation, I get this equation instead. It says x equals r cos theta. Uh, likewise, I could do the same with sine theta. Sine theta would be the opposite over the hypotenuse, y over r. And if I rearrange that, I get this equation. Now, these are very, very useful equations, so write them down. Um, it's worth writing down the obvious one, which is that by Pythagoras, r squared is x squared plus y squared. And a less than obvious, well, less useful version, but still write it down, tan theta is y over x. Now, these combinations are formally allow us to um, effectively convert between these two uh, ways of writing a complex number. So at the moment we've only seen that z equals x plus y i um, using the notation given here. I think not last time it was a plus bi, but you get the idea is a number plus so many imaginary, a number plus so many i. Now I've got an alternative way of writing x now. I can write it as r cos theta. You might not like it, but I've also got an alternative way of writing, writing y. It's r sine theta. So I could write this as r cos theta plus r sine theta i. You might think, eh, well, I guess would I do that? But because I can. And I could even write it more simply as, well, I can take out the r as a common factor, I suppose. And now I've got r bracket cos theta plus i sine theta. This is called the modulus argument form. This is the modulus argument form. And... It may seem a bit silly, but we prefer it sometimes. And you can even abbreviate it because it's always cos theta and it's always i sine theta. Some people write this as z equals r c i s theta. And the c i s theta refers to the fact that it's always cos theta plus i sine theta. You can see the c i s. So I've written that here, the c i s theta form. I've written the long version and I've also written a new version which was new to me when, when I started teaching this via the new A level. This textbook and this um, exam wants us to also to just sometimes write it as r comma theta in brackets again, square brackets at that. Um, so this is a third way. This is the most common, then this, then somewhere down the list I think is that. Write the following complex numbers in modulus argument form. Well, if we're going to do this, then probably the best thing is just a quick sketch. 4 plus 3i is very nicely up in that quadrant. Bear that in mind. It's important that's in that, in that quadrant. So um, because of that, my theta is equal to my argument. And that's important that we, we suss that. So uh, and my r is going to be... The r is always the, the simplest thing. r squared equals 4 squared plus 3 squared. 4 squared plus 3 squared is 25. So to get to r, i square root that and that's five so if r is always easy to find that will be easy to find for all of these but the argument and, and isn't necessarily quite so easy so to get theta here this is easy because it's in the first quadrant so i can write theta equals the inverse tan of and it's always the y over the x so it's three over four so if i just do that now inverse tan of three over four and i don't know what that is not a nice answer and it's 0.644. So notice now to write this in the in modulus argument form, I'd write um, uh, z equals not 4 plus 3i anymore. Now we're going to write 5. And I'm going to write cos 
0.644 plus i sine 0.644. It doesn't look very nice, that does it? But that is the answer I want. Next one. This is minus 1 plus i. So minus 1 across, 1 up. There we are. So two jobs. Find the um, radius, r squared, and ignore them. The minus is 1 squared plus 1 squared is 2, and therefore r is root 2. Um, the angle that I, I will find will be this angle. So theta is the inverse tan. And again, ignore the minuses. That's what I'd recommend. Just do 1 divided by 1, which is, uh, if you do that, you get pi by 4. Now, critically, we want this angle. So arg z is not now equal. This one was equal to this. I should perhaps have written equals arg z. And this time it's not, because I've got to do pi minus that pi by 4. And that will give me 3 pi by 4. And therefore, based on that, my answer is um, z equals root 2 is my r cos of 3 pi by 4 minus, oh sorry, plus i sine 3 pi by 4. Lastly, now this one is, I think in this quadrant, it's negative 1 across and root 3 down. So that is my angle there that I'm not going to try and find. That's root 3, that's 1. Same trick, r squared first equals 1 squared plus root 3 squared. And if you do that, you get 4. So r must be equal to 2. And now theta, again theta is the inverse tan, ignore the minuses, of root 3 divided by 1. And that is pi, we saw this one, our example just now, I think, or this at least is the answer, is pi by 3. And again, we just need to check, actually, it says in the interval from minus pi to pi, so we're not doing the same notation as last time, it's, last time it was 0 to 2 pi, this time it's pi to minus pi. So effectively, we are wanting to find this angle. And the arg z using this method is pi, and in fact, it's uh, pi by 3 minus pi. You always take away the pi. And you might need to refer back to how to do that. I mean, if effectively, if you did pi minus pi by 3, you'd get this angle, and then you need to just make it a negative answer, which is the equivalent of doing this. So this is minus 2 pi by 3 if you do it. So therefore I can write z equals, what was r? It was 2, cos of minus 2 pi by 3, plus i sine of minus 2 pi by 3. Good. Okay, next question. I don't think I have time to do all three of these, but let's see if I can do one of them. So it says, write these complex numbers in Cartesian form. Now this is the opposite way around. So that's, we, we've so far done Cartesian form. Cartesian form and we've written it in this modulus argument form and now effectively what I want to be able to do is go back again written in this form I want to go back again so I suppose straight away I know from this first example r is 13 and my argument of z is 1.176 now I suppose I want to know what quadrant that is in now 1.176 is less than 1.57. Now you might think, why do I care about 1.57? Well that is pi by 2. That's a half pi. So that tells me, now half pi is up here, so that tells me we are not as far around as that. We are in this quadrant still. So that's great news. That makes it a lot easier. So bear that in mind. Um, as I say, I'm not going to be able to do much of this, but I'll just start this off. We know that the length is 13. We know the angle, theta, is 1.176. So I suppose I can um, write x equal to r cos theta and I would be able to write um, y equal to r sine theta and I think I should be able to find x and y. I'll do that now. So I've typed them into my calculator like I said 13 cos 1.176 etc and I get x equals 5 and y equals 12 and I've just written it there at the bottom. So we'll do more of those next time. We're going to be doing as I said, exercise for uh, E. So.
Okay, see you then.